everybody. Thank you for coming back after the break. A uh, quick update on hashtag IRA. It's slowly moving in the right direction. We didn't realize, actually, there is something called an IRA <laughs> that has quite a number of hashtags and uh, searchers going uh, into the platform as well. So we'll see how IRA versus IRA sort of continues for the day. Um, I am really happy to be here to sort of bring in uh, a discussion around the LinkedIn platform itself, uh, related to education marketers especially. And I'm joined by uh, my partner on the product side. And so Tomer and I are going to really walk through sort of the next uh, half hour, 35 minutes or so on some of the things that we think uh, are worth your time. First of all, in understanding where our investments are going, what's happening to the platform, where we believe uh, our uniqueness is showcased, and where we think you guys want to uh, potentially would like to lean in from the roadmap perspective on what we're building and what we, again, want to extend. So that's the, the discussion. We will also end a few minutes early to make sure we have some time for Q&A. Okay? So if we go, I don't know if I'm supposed to move slides or say next slide, but if we go to the next slide... Is there a clicker somewhere? It's probably much easier if I have a clicker. There we go. Perfect. Thank you. I missed rehearsal. <clears throat> it's all on me, not on them. It's all here. So uh, uh, to kick it off, I think what's important to, for all of us to recognize is it really does come down to ROI. Uh, how do we make sure there's a return on investment for all of us, the time? Forget about we'll put the material, the financial commitments beside on the side for a second. It's a lot of time for us and our teams uh, to really think about the work that we do, the work we produce, all the time we think about the content strategies, all the things, the assets we create, everything that goes into the story of true understanding of what the ROI is of any campaign or really, again, any effort. The new ROI for us is something we want to make sure that you realize we're starting to really lean into. This is not just about CPL any longer for us or click-through rates or anything that we have all hopefully graduated from and moved on and expected of our partners to also graduate from. The new ROI for us is really more about impact, true impact to the business. In your case, quality students, quality students matriculating, quality students graduating, and students obviously as alumni who are active. How do we really think about ROI for the entire student journey when we're building products and we're making sure the platform is uh, capable at thinking about and delivering on what we think of this sort of new, R new ROI. So that's what we want to make sure we're addressing today is how actually LinkedIn is preparing and hopefully already prepared to deliver on uh, this higher order of expectations that we all need to have today. We're all under more pressure to deliver on this, the accountability related to, again, the financial commitments, but clearly also resource commitments and time commitments. So I want to also start with sort of our own mission to make sure we're grounded in that, because that is really what our team is set up to think about where our investments are going, make sure, again, the time that we're putting into the products we're building is really about this. It's centered on becoming the most effective platform for, in your case, again, education marketers to engage with professionals. And so we think about this in a few different ways. One is effective. We can go right to what we were just talking about, about true ROI, really understanding impact, longer term impact, true value that we are generating together. That's what we're talking about when we make uh, the statement around effective. Uh, engage. Uh, we're going to talk a little, bit up, a little bit more about this, but engagement for us is really important. It's not the click. <clears throat> that may be one signal, but what type of content are these prospective students engaging in? Well, how do they engage? Do they share? Do they comment? Do they actually post themselves? What's the difference with organic content engagement versus some kind of paid engagement? There's all sorts of signals around engagement that we're talking about when we use the word engage here. And then professionals, for us, is still context. This is a platform that inherently has been built for strivers. It is about people wanting to connect, to grow in their professional careers, and a big part of that for this room is how do we understand when the signal may be right for those professionals to be interested in furthering their education. 
speaking specifically now about the platform, and these are what we try to do is sort of suss out the most obvious to us, hopefully also to you, sort of real unique value props of why people are using LinkedIn and why marketers <coughs> are using LinkedIn. First up, quality audience. Uh, as I mentioned before, it's really about professionals. And for all of you, I would imagine, I think many of you I'm already connected to on LinkedIn, but most of us understand audience here because we ourselves are members of LinkedIn. And we ourselves understand how we connect to others on LinkedIn. We ourselves understand the quality of our own connections. Some of us may be uh, more open to connections than others, but we really understand the process <clears throat> around being a member and the value that that can give to us. And that as, is to us then leads into our own recognition of how do we think about audiences, <clears throat> excuse me, on LinkedIn. Quality is really important for us. Context is really important for us. The right type of engagement, all of that is really treating the audience fairly and professionally as they are themselves in their careers. Engagement as I mentioned, sort of strong engagement for us is really also this notion of quality engagement. It's not just about transactional relationships for us. It's much deeper. It's a much more uh, interested relationship, both from, from both sides in this case. From an educational institution talking to a prospective student, there's an engagement there that we're trying to build together that is more of a quality engagement, more of a longer term understanding. I want to read content. I want to engage content. I want to give signals back that actually I appreciate this content and it's helping me in my own goal of actually driving toward in some decision making. And then trust. We're going to go a little bit deeper into trust. I think this has become really apparent to us over the last sort of year to 18 months, but it's also been a bigger issue in our society. And so all of us are now wrestling with this notion of how do I make sure my own messaging and my content is in an environment that I can trust, but also is then uh, enabling the right engagement to happen because of that, again, environment that uh, your messaging or content can be uh, just deployed. The interesting thing, when you talk about the audience, so we'll talk about each of those sort of uh, uh, components we touched on. Audience, you know, we, we know that based on the fact that uh, we, we can look at profiles, we understand all of this data, this first party uh, rich data set that we have, uh, we understand that there is almost half of the audience is actually a prospect for this room. They are, as I mentioned, by nature strivers. They are joining LinkedIn because they believe it will help them better their career in some way, shape, or form. Again, that might be networking, that might be engaging in various content around improving their own understanding of their industries, their own current roles, new companies they may want to assess and understand to partner with or even work for. And then, of course, how do I actually better my own skills and grow in my career? A big part of that might be education. So you all know this. The audience here is rich with prospects, and we want to make sure we're enabling you guys to engage with them properly so we do get towards this uh, new ROI that we're talking about. To go a little bit more granular related to this audience, and again, it shouldn't be news to many of you here, 5.7 million members that have the criteria that I would say is a perfect sort of sweet spot, if you will, almost the bullseye for types of prospects for this room. The engaged uh, members that have given us this first party data about who they are based on their own education or their interests, or again, their experience levels, we can start to say that this is a group of people that we should be talking to in some way, shape, or form to try to drive the engagement that we'd like. And here's a couple more statistics about their engagement. These are, by nature, these profiles are more engaging with the content or more engaged with the content than almost any other profiles we see. Back to the, the, the point, which is, Naturally, these are folks that are looking for improving their careers and growing their careers. So it's on our shoulders, again, collectively and working together to figure out the right way to engage with them for the right results. Uh, Converge, I don't know if anybody's here, but we did work with uh, an agency. Uh, so this is third-party data. 
The data that I'll share on a couple of these slides are nothing from our own proprietary methodologies or data or research. These are third-party data uh, sets that I'll share. Converge did uh, work with a number of, I think they worked with UL UCLA Anderson, a few other schools, and they actually found <clears throat> over a bunch of campaigns that there was a 5x return on conversion rates versus Facebook. And again, this is not about doing something or slamming something about Facebook or saying we're better than Facebook. This is examples of, again, Converge and their work in these specific campaigns going after those specific students or prospective students, and there is a great return there. This just talks about, I think, the ability to really think about the prospects we have and targeting really relevant content, looking for that relevant experience and engagement. This one potentially is something that is obvious to a lot of us, but I think it's really important for us to internalize and understand. This is incredibly important for all of us as marketers and brands to think about and understand when I am creating content, I'm thinking about experiences, and I'm thinking about engaging with my prospects. This slide, I think, does it incredibly well. The notion of what happens on a professional network versus a social network. This is actually, to me, the most clear way of describing the difference because it is about a mindset. When I show up on LinkedIn, I'm actually there with some kind of actually uh, notion of I am doing something and really it is about investing time. I am actually trying to read something that I want to learn about. I want to engage with somebody. I want to network with somebody. I want to grow. Again, myself, I am trying to strive and I'm trying to strive for my own good and my team's good also and others around me. And whereas on a personal network or a social network, I'm there to spend time. And I might be engaging in very different ways, and I'm cl clearly using social networks and personal networks, but it's the mindset that I think we all have to be aware of. And I would imagine if we asked almost everybody in this room, you would feel the same way. When you're thinking about spending time, it could be incredibly engaging, but when I think about LinkedIn, the type of content I want to engage with, and us as marketers, the type of content we should be putting in these professional networks is really about how do I think about assisting somebody? How do I become useful? Because they're investing time, how do I actually be a part of the engagement that they're actually looking for? A couple last uh, slides here to get into before I bring Tomer up. The notion of what's happened on the platform also is we've really invested uh, in relevant content. And uh, Tomer, before he's taken over our product team, he had worked on the consumer side. He'd worked basically building the feed on LinkedIn. So he has a great view of what's happened from a consumer side, our member experience side, now bringing that to thinking about it from the product side for the marketing solutions business. But it's really about you know, engaging and driving more engagement with the members that we have today. So again, you see some of the statistics here. There's some people still think of us as really a jobs experience. And, and some of the data here and 15 times more content related to uh, your professional well-being in life and career versus just jobs is one of the data points that's important to show the evolution of what's happened on the platform. The last piece, as I mentioned, was around trust. This is a uh, opportunity for all of us as brands to think about how we want to play uh, and how we want to show up in this post-trust world that we've talked a lot about in media circles, and I'm sure uh, in your own institutions you've talked about this, about how do you uh, make sure you're protecting yourself and your brand uh, in this new world. There's been tons of press about it. Uh, this has been obviously something in the for-profit side of EDU that we've seen for the last handful of years, up and f up, uh, back and forth related to this, but now it's gone a lot further. So I want to touch on, this is some, again, as I mentioned, third-party data. This is from the Edelman uh, Trust Barometer. They do every single year. They've done it for the last 18 years. This is the first time they've ever, in their 18 years, seen all four of these institutions decline in terms of trust. This goes across NGOs, business, media, and government. That in itself is a signal for all of us to recognize about a bigger issue, obviously, that we're all facing. When we talk about, you know, sort of more specifically who we trust, so we talked just before about institutions and the decline there, think about this. We now trust somebody who is more like ourself or an equal to an academic, a known academic expert. 
that, you know, again, there's probably, we, we could probably do whole conferences on that topic alone. Um, and then the other one that I think is incredible is the fact that this notion of the CEO credibility, and that's dropping to this all-time low, uh, again, within the Edelman uh, Trust Barometer work. So, so we're in a situation where our, our own members from LinkedIn's perspective or your own prospects from students, uh, the student perspective, are, are distrusting most of their institutions they've worked with and tried to grow with and learn from uh, in this last year. Again, third-party research. This was from the Business Insider, uh, the Business Insider research they do. I think it's called the Intelligencer or something like that. <clears throat> they asked about 1,750 of their readers uh, around uh, the social network usage or professional network use in our case. And the trusted voice related to that. So this sort of, again, I think for all of us, we make this may make sense, but here's the data that says that really LinkedIn in this case contextually is seen as being important when you're thinking about trust. Last couple uh, builds here, getting very tactical because I think this is important for all of us in the room and we go back to think about uh, these sort of questions that we're asking or touching on. Uh, why is LinkedIn trust uh, lead in this sort of trust category? One really important part is everybody who works with us is really a member. And you've all, I think, generally had a fairly good experience. You've allowed LinkedIn to see a lot of your first party data. And for most part, we've actually done a very good job of, of protecting that data. And you, I think, have had a useful experience related to your own opportunities of connecting to folks building networks. But more importantly, from a commercial perspective, here's some of the data points why we also think there's trust that's built into the platform. You know, viewability, a big part of all of our worlds related to other programmatic or other display inventory. We have dynamic ads that are usually in that same space that we have allotted on the, on the homepage, on the desktop. You know, again, viewability is, is twice the average. We have one ad, really. We have a feed and there's other, obviously content in that feed as well. But really one ad above the fold on the right-hand side is all we have. And so again, for us, we've tried to think about it from a trust standpoint and a member experience standpoint first. Least intrusive ad formats, those always could be argued. I would imagine that's a little subjective. Some people don't like any ads. But we think of it as trying to be as native as possible. We want that experience to be relevant and feeling like it's adding to my experience versus uh, maybe getting in the way. And you see the others. This is really important for us. As I mentioned, we're talking about three unique things. It was this notion of audience, the quality of the audience, the engagement, what's happening there, and trust. So those are important takeaways for you. We're trying to think about that as we build our next products and what we're doing uh, in the future on the platform. So I want to bring up Tomer. As I mentioned, uh, he's really been uh, in the role probably, what, six months now? Five, six months? Something, he's shaking his head, sort of, yes, no. So something like that. Um, and as I say, though he's been here six years at LinkedIn, most of the time on the consumer side. So I think he brings a new perspective to how we're thinking about engagement within the feed related to both members and from a business perspective. So Tomer, why don't you come on up? Thank you, Penry, and hi, everyone. It's great to be surrounded with so many uh, leaders in the educational space. Um, you know, f when, when we ask me how many times I'm, I'm in a role at LinkedIn, it's, uh, you know, I changed a few roles during my time, so it's always a little bit, uh, it takes a little bit seconds to actually remember. Um, so today, I'm, I'm actually really excited to share this presentation with you because we're going to share something we've never shared before. And that's what we call the insider playbook for how you really unlock your potential on LinkedIn. Uh, for a little bit of, of context, a few years ago, like over the past few years, LinkedIn has really grown in engagement in a pretty massive way. Uh, a lot of members today see us as a daily destination to come and engage with others, uh, inspire and be inspired, uh, but really form that member-to-member -member, uh, connection. Ultimately, they're trying to connect to opportunity. And what this is a great opportunity for brands to join the conversation, literally join the conversation with, with, uh, with members. What we've seen is uh, a small portion of our members are extremely successful in the steps they make and how they basically unlock potential. So what we actually did is we 
we kind of studied it and we wanted to codify it and share it with you guys today. So hopefully you can, as soon as you leave the room or tomorrow if you want to have an easy day, uh, you can actually go and deploy this at, at, uh, at your organization as well. So starting off with the engagement on LinkedIn, uh, Penn, we touched on it. This is massive. This is literally, uh, there's no better way to describe it than booming. We have north of a half a billion members today on the platform. If you look at our news feed, our feed sessions, we see more than 50% growth in sessions year over year. And I, I, was a, I was at a similar event last year, and I was talking about 40% year over year growth last year, and that was exciting. So we're literally just accelerating in growth. That's literally the story happening right now on LinkedIn. In terms of viral engagement, we're looking at literally doubling, 100% year over year, and mobile continues to be the dominant platform and continues to grow at 2x the engagement year over year. So it's a massive, massive story across the board. Now, why does this matter? Because now there's a, a pretty amazing organic foundation for all of you to start deploying and make sure it's part of your, of your playbook. So the way we see it is there are really two components. There's the organic and there's the paid. And you don't want to think of those in silos. You want to think of themselves as little one flywheel. The organic is the foundation. You do pay that boosts the organic. The organic basically contributes back to the, to, uh, to the pay. Then you basically get a flywheel working on LinkedIn, which is becoming your own differentiated asset. So how do you do it? So basically, we looked at it from a literally three, what we think are simple steps for you to actually take action on. First one is creating a compelling organic presence on LinkedIn. Now, what does that mean? The table stakes is having a great page, right? So like the right imagery, uh, the right uh, content, the right description, links, uh, basically have kind of not all the, t all the stuff you already do really, really well with making sure it's always updated. But then obviously have your voice come out as your brand, sharing great content, authentic voices of your brand, uh, sharing regularly. You know, we see our best, uh, our best customers, our best brands, they share literally several times a day, sometimes within hours or minutes of each other. It's really about the content you're trying to share. But just as the beginning of step one, the other part is actually identifying key voices inside of your company and outside that can be brand champions, brand extensions. So usually people say, oh, I'm going to bring my CEO. Great, bring your CEO, and she could do an awesome job, but it doesn't stop with your CEO. Think about that potential engineer or researcher. She's working on something awesome, so onboard her to becoming a top voice on LinkedIn. Think of somebody outside of the company who is a natural brand extension and basically uh, have them as being a top voice on LinkedIn. But you want to think about like those three to five and even more, the more you have, the better. Voices that you basically promote from your own brand they write authentic, great content. It's not about PR releases and product announcements. Those are great. You should do those anyway. But this is about great expertise being shown. Now, the beautiful part of LinkedIn today is, you know, I sometimes talk about it as YouTube 2008. You can literally build a pretty amazing follow base if you have great content. We're seeing people jumping to tens of, tens of thousands of followers uh, within a very short period of time because they are very, you know, they're really interesting. They're really compelling. So the beautiful part about having three to five top voices, they can start actually promoting each other and help each other grow their own audiences. But that's something you can literally identify, start identifying today, and look for those voices across. And again, not just your CEO, please. Uh, the third uh, part of being a compelling piece is really about your most important asset, which is also your most powerful asset, and that's your employees. LinkedIn is very unique in the ability of actually enabling you and empowering you to actually reach out to your employees. So whenever you share from the company page, we want to make sure your employees see it. And your employees are the best brand extensions that you get. For the most part, they're highly proud to work for your company. They're highly proud to talk about their job. They want to show off in a way. And they're massive, right? It's in the thousands to tens of thousands. They have their own network. So the big piece of virality is that, you know, you fi Tony finds it interesting the moment they engage with it, it goes to their network. And most folks, piece, you know, they kind of miss the this most important piece of the employees part. And this is, again, you can do for the company page. We also have a product called Elevate that you can basically identify key people within the company, kind of start that snowball of, of engagement, but really kind of being able to bring your employees to the table. 
So that's, step, that's basically step number one. Step number two is where you start boosting and learning, leveraging the organic piece, but now you're focusing on paid. So the first piece is take your, garden, the, your organic piece and see how it's doing. Learn from it. And the ones that are doing really well, you already have a great creative. You never thought that this would actually take off and you have, some, you, know, you have an agency preparing something else for you, but there is a creative you posted that is doing really well. Use it. That's the one you want to use because it's already resonating. Maybe it's the authentic voice, maybe it's the question, maybe it's the comments already happening, but that's the creative you want to use. So the ability to actually use organic and boost it with paid is extremely powerful. The second piece is actually uh, literally focusing on those untapped uh, audiences or segments you're after. And this is where a lot of our toolkits on our campaign manager and our ad system really helps you tap into those. You know, for the most part, we are about reach and targeting, right? So you can go as niche as you want to specific, you're starting a new, a new course, a new line of study, and there are very specific people you want to actually make it happen, or you want to go extremely broad. You can do both on LinkedIn, and we're actually, like I'm going to show it to you in a few slides, there's a lot of ways for you to bring your own data to the table. So this is where you basically start, you know, in a way, igniting new targeting facets that you know, ult ultimately can become organic, and then again can boost the pay, then go back to organic, and so on. That's the beautiful part of this flywheel. The third step is the most important step of all. And you, know, it's, you guys are in the education space, so it's all about learning. There's no point in starting something if you're not allowing it to learn and optimize over time, because the whole idea is when you start off, you have a hypothesis about what, what would work, but then it's really seeing how it's doing and learning from it. So the idea of being able to measure, learn, and then optimize is key. It's going to be a key part of your strategy if you're building products, if you're, building, uh, if you're doing marketing, if you're doing sales. Learning is a key component here. So we actually want to offer a few tools there to really help you uh, make it happen. So the first one is what we call LinkedIn Engagement Insights. And this is a window into engagement on LinkedIn. This is a free product that we're basically offering that allows you to go and see what are people on LinkedIn doing right now. So you can basically say, I want to see students in Arizona uh, you know, with this level of experience. What are they engaging with? Or with this kind of background, what are they reading? What topics are they reading? Again, it's really important for you to join the conversation literally. So this actually allows you to tap into that. The other part is website demographics. We launched this uh, roughly two and a half months ago. And uh, that really allows you to understand who is coming to your website, the traffic, the footprint that your website has in terms of visitors. So we basically, we provide LinkedIn data uh, to allow you to see what kind of industries, segments, functions, seniority levels, geos, are actually coming and engaging with your websites. Now there's two key takeaways you want to take from this. One is, are the folks you're targeting coming? So is it really paying off? Uh, two, are there any segments you're missing out on? Because you never thought that this specific segment would come. It's all about serendipitous discovery. And you actually want to start tapping into and target. So this actually really helps you understand your properties extremely well. So you can bring it and do great organic behind it and paid and so on. Third piece is when you're really thinking, you know, you run a campaign or you run a great organic and you run creatives on organically uh, and as well from a paid perspective, you can go and we want to allow you to slice and dice any way you see. So you can actually find that great ROI. So whether it's by clicks, impressions, conversion, leads, uh, all of those, plus who are those people? What functions, what industries? And again, it's an repressive campaign you want to do. Ultimately, we want to make you smarter, more productive, more successful. So you're actually seeing that new ROI from LinkedIn. So to recap, uh, again, generally simple, but really key to do. Build a, comp a compelling presence on LinkedIn, start boosting it with reach and engagement from a paid perspective, and then continuously learn, optimize, so you can actually do better over time. That's literally the playbook. Uh, I want to quickly do a quick uh, session into around some of our product highlights. We had a very busy year. Uh, I had some white hairs coming from this year, but it was all obviously like a really uh, massive year for us across the board. And uh, I'm not going to cover the 68 releases we had this year. Literally, it was that big. I'm going to cover a few highlights, which I think are actually extremely relevant, and some of the stuff coming up. So we have this, like, you know, four themes that we are kind of aspiring for on the product side. 
We want to basically exceed your objectives. We want to prove the value to you. We want to simplify our products. And ultimately, we want to help you target and reach the audiences you care most about. And we had multiple releases across. The list is actually bigger. Uh, those are some of the key ones we had recently. Uh, but this has been a very key, key year for us. I'm going to touch on a few of those. And then we're going to open up for questions. And then you can feel free to ask uh, you know, anything you have in mind. Uh, starting with lead gen forms. This is something that we actually released, I think, in the end of Q1, around April or March. And it's becoming extremely effective. It's this kind of one click, easy, bring your LinkedIn information in and submit that information uh, back to, to the member itself. We're now working specifically with the education space on allowing you to actually add some on custom questions like what kind of line of study are you interested in and so on. We know this is something we want to heavily invest in. But this is already producing some pretty massive results. Key advice, follow up on those leads uh, as soon as possible. Leads can go you know, and disappear after time if you don't follow up. So it's really important you guys actually follow up, hopefully within the same day or with the same week. Uh, another launch we had is around university pages to company pages. The company pages team had done a massive work around kind of combining the two so you don't have to have that clunky experience of using both and sponsored updates from one side and another. We want to make sure it's a smooth experience. So now it's one holistic experience. You can run sponsored updates from universities or companies. Uh, and ultimately, you want to make sure you can actually put all your affiliate schools there. You know, so if it's a school of business, uh, and so on. It's all kind of as part of the one umbrella, which is your organization. And it comes to groups. This is something, as you guys saw, we have a great engagement right now. So groups is continuously uh, a great focus area for now and, and making sure how we actually reinvest in it. Uh, because the group's notion is phenomenal, right? It's about conversations about a group that has very specific traits or interests. And that's exactly what we're doing right now. And it's happening in the feed. Hashtag is some sort of a group. So there's a whole investment now around uh, groups and kind of bring that to life at LinkedIn at a pretty massive scale. Uh, matched audiences uh, was a great launch we had, uh, I think, around uh, April or May. This allows you to bring your own data and combine it with the LinkedIn first party data and have this like amazing data on steroids uh, campaigns. Uh, but the whole notion there is you can use your retargeting, you can bring your context to the table, you can focus on specific accounts on LinkedIn, you can decide to black click accounts. It's really allowing you to go, again, as broad as you want, as specific as you want, and, uh, and also bring your own data to the table. Uh, new targeting facets, the ability to actually to follow followers, the ability to follow uh, connections of people who are following the company. The whole idea there, by the way, is allowing you to tap into those easier uh, audiences to reach. So you know the ROI should be bigger. So I want to make sure like, the with those targeting facets, so you can become more sophisticated in how you actually approach it. Uh, and then upcoming releases that we have, one is that we are super excited about. Uh, I know, you know, it sounds like a video. It's like a last year kind of thing. This is big on LinkedIn. We launched this uh, for our members three months ago. And remember, we always keep the bar professional. So whenever we launch something on the member side, we want to make sure the bar is high. Uh, this is why sometimes it takes us uh, a little bit more time to get it right. Um, and on the member side, it's phenomenal. Penry just showed me uh, one of our leaders in Amsterdam who finished a marathon. And his last two minutes was him talking about determination and excellence as he was finished the marathon. That was inspiring for many people. That's the type of stuff we love to see on LinkedIn. Right? That's the stuff the strivers are focusing on. Um, so we're starting a pilot actually last week. And we're going uh, to GA this to the beginning of 2018. So we're really, really excited about this. Uh, second is we have lead gen forms for sponsored email. Sponsored email, again, is this very, very unique vehicle. It allows you to be in front of a member in their inbox. And they're going to the inbox a lot on LinkedIn right now. And this is kind of almost this one-to-one -one intimate conversation happening there. Uh, so we're going to heavily invest there. And you can see lead gen forms coming for sponsored email as well. So that's easy way of collecting leads. White paper download, great way to show your knowledge and immediately uh, show the value back to the member. So we're going to allow that from our dynamic ads where you can literally tap on, on a button and the, and the asset will come to the member itself. Uh, so it's a great way, you know, you can avoid this whole back and forth and did they actually open and not open and so on. So this will be an immediate form of, of, of delivery. And carousel ads is a great way, again, of showing uh, a story. Ultimately, you guys have phenomenal stories you want to share with members. 
the better your story, the better your narrative, the more they understand it, the more compelling it becomes. This is why video is by now a no-brainer across the industry. Uh, Carousel ads is a great way to also tell your story. You're moving away from one creative to multiple creatives, multiple messaging. It's almost like a slide deck uh, that we think will be really exciting, both for members as well as for our customers, and specifically for you guys on the, on the education space. And last but not least, tracking. This is something that we uh, we heavily care about. This is important for us because we want to make sure you always can track uh, the results you're having in your old tools. So we launched this with uh, double click around dynamic ads and text ads. We're working with them literally heavily right now around bringing this to sponsored content where we hope to actually release it by end of year or beginning of next year. But the whole idea here uh, is to allow you to kind of track it all the way uh, to your own, to your own uh, tools themselves. So with that, I'm going to uh, invite Penny back on stage. We're going to do a quick Q&A. And uh, again, investing in your playbook is extremely important. It will differentiate you, as well as taking advantage of all the tools we actually launched this year. So feel free. Uh, you're we all have friends. mics. You're all friends here. And we're happy to go into anything we discussed or any other questions that we might have uh, we might have missed today too. I have a quick question about integration. You, you mentioned uh, email uh, lead gen forms and uh, and uh, just re regular lead gen forms. And in our experience, it's a little harder to get notifications right away. Right? You, you mentioned follow up, uh, quick follow up. It would be nice to have yeah. some sort of notification coming to advertiser to to do that. Yeah, otherwise, they now need to go and uh, uh, check, uh, check the forms and uh, connect with people. So I was wondering if uh, what, what's on the roadmap for integration with uh, CRM tools and uh, uh, like e even e uh, email itself? Yeah, so happy you're raising this because it's a great topic uh, on both accounts, by the way. One is acknowledging that identification to come back and re-engage is, is critical. So today you can always come back and check and so on. So I, I realize it's kind of like a one-way process, but we're going to improve that tremendously. You're going to get notifications on LinkedIn. You can actually go directly and l alert you of like leads coming to the system. And they're always kind of funneling for the CRMs itself. Uh, it's also coming into this whole notion around if you get a notification real time and we allow you to respond back, you can really have a whole conversation with a member which is, by the way, amazing. It has, you know, hasn't been done before. There's no tool out there. Email marketing is you know, a way to get your uh, you know, creative into an email, but then there's a one click and you go out. What if you can have a back and forth with, with a customer and ask more questions and qualification questions and kind of being, making sure you move away from uh, only awareness all the way to consideration, maybe even a purchase in the end. Uh, and then on the other side, uh, we are pretty big on the notion of automated and always connected. Uh, and for that, that means for us, we want to make sure we connect with your tools. So we make it easy for you to track your performance, but also get notifications, whatever you're using as well. So what you'll see from us is a whole roadmap just around integration with the specific tools you guys are using to make it easier for you guys, not to also to track, but also to basically re-engage back with your leads and prospects. I have, oh, sorry. Okay, so I have a question. What you guys are doing with paid and sponsored, oh my gosh, love it. I love hearing this, that's great. That's not my job though. <laughs> <laughs> I only do organic and I wanna know what's happening on product side for making LinkedIn more of a social media standard because a lot of the tools that I need to make my life easier, what you have makes paid easier. I love it, but it's really different. Like I can't use the same, picture because it puts the gray things on the side. I can't edit a post, not sponsored. I got it. That's coming out. I'm pumped. Um, things like if they use the hashtag, I can't like their post <laughs> from the brand. So what are you doing to address those issues to compete with the other social media platforms that haven't better engagement between brand and people? Yeah. Uh, so first of all, you're completely right. Um, <laughs> and, and I think the feedback is spot on. I think what you guys are seeing now with members, that's really the ecosystem uh, flourishing. So now our investment is really around the company side, company to member side from, from, from an organic standpoint, and you'll see that flourishing as well. The team is actually must be very hard at work. So a lot of it is foundational pieces. Like if you guys recall, this has been a very busy year for us, a lot of launches across the board. 
it sits on top of like two pretty big foundational years we had. Uh, so you'll see a lot of that coming in. But ultimately, everything you'll be able to do as a member, you'll be able to do as an organization, as a company. So you can really build that amazing social media hub you want. And for us, that becomes a whole peak part of this whole in, in complete kind of flywheel. So you will see the investment there as well. So, it's like tomorrow, yeah. definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Open your laptop right now. Um, <laughs> a lot of stuff are coming. So you'll see again, like videos, for example, for publishers. We launched that uh, a week ago, mm -hmm. Sparks? Two weeks ago. And that's a good one. That's yeah, a that's a great one. So uh, analytics around it. I think we also have a lot of stuff around like being able to like merge those accounts. You'll see there's a whole roadmap there, which I think is, I'm actually more excited and I'm also partly frustrated like you because I think when I get this faster. But at the same time, uh, the beautiful part is the value is there. So we'll, we'll, we'll build it. It's already happening right now. Once you get it complete, you're actually going to get some pretty amazing stuff across the board. But you can already do some pretty awesome stuff right now. See how you avoided your timeline question? <laughs> <laughs> All right. He's a pro at that, by the way. <laughs> Anyone? Do you have a question here, sir? Yes, I do. Um, first of all, thank you for the insights that you brought. And I got actually um, a question and a suggestion. The question is um, talking about credibility of the contents that we are sharing as a, from the business point of view. There is a thing that we would really uh, like to, to, to get, that is some more social listening coming from the platform in order also to understand what are the topics that we are gonna, we're gonna possibly uh, talk better about. And the hint is the, is that possibility to put videos on the downloading paper side because it's really interesting resources. So we would also like to improve a little bit, not just with the static images, but also with the, with the video. Cool. So uh, to your first question, that was the piece I showed around linking giving these out. We launched this in February. It really allows you to see what are, again, members at LinkedIn talking about, engaging with. So name a segment, name a region, name a seniority level, names like background, and then you can actually go and see specific topics. We'll also show you taxonomy. So you'll say, oh, machine learning, part of computer science, connected to AI, part of deep learning, and so on. So you'll be able to actually tap into that whole notion itself. Uh, the qu the great part is like we're actually gonna we're we're not just we didn't just release it we're gonna invest in it so you can actually access it very easily. It relates for a partnership. We want to make sure you actually be able to access it directly through the product itself. But you have a, a pretty amazing window into LinkedIn right now. Uh, the download paper, uh, cool idea. So when it comes to video, people usually see it directly in. It's actually uh, for the most part auto played, and you can actually just engage with it. But I think the notion of getting your creative to be much more engaging, and again, uh, the whole notion of the creative being creative, not just kind of an e a static image, is something we are continuously thinking about. Great. Um, we have about 65% email addresses on our alumni base, and I see that you've got an autofill to populate alumni database, which is a start to, to correcting that problem. But it looks like um, you got to catch them early, you got to get the students to opt in, and there's got to be some kind of connectivity to our database to get that to work. And then we've got alumni who it's not in their interest to opt in. Um, have you done this with other schools to, and had great success at getting alumni databases where, where we want them to be? I don't know if we had examples specifically. I was going to say, the only one I, like Saeed and Jessica may know, that I think there are a couple of examples of alumni database. I, I agree with you though, this is one of the big sort of challenges related to continuing the dialogue with, uh, with the alumni population you have. I would, I would argue one point though that you made is uh, the alumni may not want to opt in. I think it's our collective job to actually offer value that they actually want to opt in. So that's sort of what I think we, we've got to work on together is how can we make something compelling on LinkedIn where many of those alumni are they might not have you know, been shouting from the rooftops about being an alumni or wanting to connect, but if we're able to somehow work together to actually find value or th ha allow them to see more value, they may opt in there. But I, I wanna make sure again, if there is a specific answer to the question of any schools doing alumni database work really well with us, do I have to come next to you to walk in my, 
Oh, all right. These guys will answer your question. They're right in the over. You want to stand? I think you probably know these guys. They spoke earlier, but there are a couple of examples. But it's it's a lot of work, and we do want to do better here. Anybody else? I think we got a couple minutes, minute or so. If there's a question or two left. No. All right. Well, uh, from uh, one from somebody. Sorry. So our exec MBAs are growing older and older, and you talked about a segmentation where it's from three to ten years. But what is your overall segmentation on LinkedIn? Are you also covering the ten to twenty years work experience, and which part do they play? Yeah, so it would be that that is a targeting facet you could deploy. You could look and build your own segments related to how much time of work experience or something. So that's just one example we chose today. And how big is it? Well, I think uh, you could look at most of the mature markets that we have. Uh, and we're sort of at the point from a scale perspective that we almost mirror the population in those countries. So it would be actually probably fairly similar to the population of those age groups, those demographic groups in those countries, uh, especially, again, against the professional context. So if there are specific markets or uh, folks you're looking at, we can give you the specific answers on exactly, uh, exactly those opportunities. All right. So uh, on behalf of Tomer, thank you very much. And, and really, thank you for spending so much time with us uh, over the day. And hopefully, you really do find it uh, to be super productive. Thanks so much. Thank you.